now. Wait a minute. <laughs> Okay, um, so we're going to talk about uh, chapter 13 and chapter 14 together, okay, of your textbook. So we're going to introduce the concept called uh, inheritance. Um, so let me give you a very simple example. What is an inheritance looks like? So inheritance is trying to describe a relationship between two classes. Uh, one of them is basically we're inheriting from is called the parent class. And the one is um, inheriting another one is actually called the, the child class. So inheritance in, in some sense, is basically uh, is a relationship. Um, so in object-oriented paradigm, we usually uh, draw something we call a uh, class hierarchy. Okay, sure, how do I do that? I don't know, that, that's the best I can do. There are only three, I already lower two. Um, anybody knows how to do better control? Let me know. All right. Well, let, let's let's come with this uh, for a while. Unless somebody is somebody complain. Yeah. I will not talk on midterm until I finish chapter thirteen and chapter fourteen because midterm is based on chapter eleven to chapter fourteen. So actually, I cannot talk about that until I finish. Uh, this set of concepts, okay? Yes, don't, don't worry, I, I will talk about midterm and uh, it, it will be a major uh, um, milestone of this class and make sure that you actually understand fully about the, the whole concept about chapter 11 and chapter 14. Yes? Um, have you looked at the NDBug yet? Server? No, I actually turn it off because I reboot. I thought you guys are done already. Okay, now I'm getting a different uh, link because every time I restart, I'm getting a different NG rock. Okay, so for those of you who actually um, is, can you actually just, let me, let me try to still announce that Yeah, I think I would just I would just cut and paste here. You can you can just type it up, okay? This is the link here is NG Rock. Why can I do this? Do I have to do this? That's very strange. Let me come back here. Yeah, that's the link. I hope you can see that. Okay, this is the link over here. Okay, let me know when I can uh, move on. Yeah, there is another question in the back or no question? Okay. 
All right, everybody. Yes. What? It's not a new one. This is actually the continuation of uh, the the um, the one from last week. But this coming Friday, we're going to have a new one. Okay. Yes. I have uh, I have some GitHub code, and uh, for that, and the slide of the everything in the class is in another GitHub folder. Uh, I think I forgot. I call it GitHub slide or something under there. Is everything there? Um, yeah. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, I'm going to go back to the slide. Okay, so um, in after in the paradigm, we have a important concept called class hierarchy. So class hierarchy is try to describe all the inheritance relationship among all the class that you have for your project. Um, so for example, this is a way to draw inheritance hierarchy or sometimes we call class hierarchy with only two class. You can imagine in the real world, the, the uh, situation is a lot more complicated, but let's start learning from something very simple. So, I typically draw a circle representing the child class. I said child carton, and then the other class is a box. And basically I draw a line over there to draw the design about the class. This is called class hierarchy with two class. And the relationship, usually we call the inheritance relationship, or usually we call it an is a relationship. Is a relation. Well, what is, is a relationship? Because when you draw this, essentially you're saying that carton is a box. So this two object, the, the two class have that relationship. So anytime you actually create an object from the child class, it means you actually also create an object for the parent class as well. Because why? Because the child is a parent. Okay, it is a parent means that they are not parent, but they have all the things they inheriting from the parents. So that's why this is the relationship. Okay, so class hierarchy is important because it is a language neutral, but once people design the class hierarchy is very um, um, for information that you actually know what are the class you're dealing with and what whenever you create an object, what kind of other stuff got created. For example, in this case, essentially when you create a class carton, it's also implied you create a class box as well. Okay, so that is the relationship is trying to represent. Okay, so that's high level to represent uh, what is uh, inheritance. So now we look at some of the um, uh, a syntax issue. By the way, I want to show you a more complicated uh, class hierarchy before I talk about the code. For example, this one is a more uh, extended uh, class hierarchy. Uh, so you can see that um, a, an administrative teacher is an administrator. For example, when uh, I was in the, I, I, I have been a teacher, for the university for 23 years. And about 2014, I got dragged in, dragged in to do administrator. So I became inherit is a administrator and also is a teacher. All right. And then they both, both teacher and administrator, they are a faculty. And both faculty and a the staff, they are employee. And employee, student, and alumni, they're all community members, for example. Okay, so essentially we're drawing a, um, um, a class hierarchy represent all class, all classes we have for the scenario we'd like to model. Okay, that's the class hierarchy. 
Okay, now let's actually go back to this slide I showed you earlier. So now I want to um, connect to is that, okay, now we kind of understand what we want to do in an abstract way about we want to represent that relationship and we want to use that relationship to do something. Um, uh, before we actually answer the other more important question is uh, why do we need to have inheritance? So by the way, whenever I teach you something or whenever you read something from the web or from any other sources, the first question you should have in mind regarding a concept like inheritance, you should always ask yourself, not just what it, what is it, but more important, why do I need it? Why do I want to use this concept? And that is actually always uh, uh, important thing for every programmer to know. Okay, so uh, first I want to tell you, okay, how do I actually represent the concept of inheritance in C++? Now we talk about the linguistic of C++ representing um, 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 the inheritance. So uh, let's actually look at the child class. The child class is probably easier. So in the child class, you, you actually see one thing. Look at the blue part. When you declare it's a child class, it's very simple. You just say class, carton, um, a column, and then you actually could put multiple things here. I haven't actually teach you that, but so you can actually initially just say public. Public is probably the most common case. I will explain to you what's the difference when you put public, private, and the protected in that particular position here. Okay, so so currently don't worry about this, but basically when you say carton is a box, you just declare class with a column and then just put a box there. Maybe for, for, for now, just say public box. So this basically, already connect the the class carton with the box or oh, sorry with the class above uh in the shaded area and over here you can see that i have actually class box that's original design and then i have something called protected something called public okay so now you actually previously you see private and public now we introduce another one called protected so um, pretty much from the, from the parent class perspective, it doesn't need to worry about who actually, which class is going to inherit, inheriting from me. But they, the only thing they need to worry about is this protected area. So if you see the protected in C++, uh, it means that it try to specify about how I like to be inherited from, okay? So in that sense, when you say protected, okay, by the way, here you could have a private. If it's a private, that means it's really private to the class box. Even the child class cannot access. So you can think about, I might define some attribute, but I don't want the, um, the child class to directly access my private error, uh, sorry, my private member as his private member. So in that case, I would say private. But what happened if I'm a, I'm a parent class, I want my child class to be able to access my so-called private member as their private member. In that case, you actually use the keyword protected. So if you use this keyword protected, that means over here, you can actually directly say this to the length. To actually be able to access to that. Okay, so that's that's the protected. And there was a one more thing I want to describe is the constructor. Remember, I said when you create a child class, and you're not just creating the child class, but you also create the an instance of the parent class. So therefore, you can see that the constructor of both class need to be called when you create a create a carton. You actually need to create a, a, a carton object. Yes, you are going to call the constructor of the carton. But at the same time, you actually also create a, um, a, uh, um, um, a parent class, an instance of the parent class. So you need to actually also invoke 
the parent's constructor. But that is actually usually the programmer will just call the partner when, when you actually call that. So we're basically going to specify when you design the child class, you have to say whenever you call this constructor, which constructor of the parents I'm going to call. So you can see that over here is actually calling the box, which is with this uh, three um, 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 initial parameter that you need to be putting there. Okay. So that's the that's the um, that's the my first introduction for the simplest case for the inheritance. So that's how you describe. How do you actually um, um, describe that there is an inheritance relationship? Colon, public box. And, and then for the parent, you actually need to decide whether you want to have a protected or not. And then for the constructor, you actually need to call that constructor explicitly for your parent class after calling. I think you have a question and then you, yeah, go ahead. What's the material? Oh, material. This is just an initialization. Material is a private member. So when I call constructor, I can actually do it this way to initialize this. So this material description, I'm actually just taking this description to initialize this material. So this is equivalent to say material is equal to DSC within the constructor. It has nothing to do with uh, um, inheritance. Okay, yeah. So let's say we have another class that we inherit from the object. So to create that, the object we have to specify all three classes for these two. Um, so assuming I create another class, which is the child class of part A, right? So that particular class, in their constructor, they are going to say Barton. Oh, so and then with all whatever, all the all the parameter they need to put in. So that is going to invoke this one. And this one will invoke. So it kind of recursively, layer by layer, is going to construct. So so this actually uh, go to another very interesting question, is that the way inheritance works is that we we have to layer to layer to actually construct the system. Yeah. Do you have a question there? Yeah. So so Barton isn't uh, inheriting the protected members? They actually inherit everything, but protected means that I can access those variables direct without using the uh, without using the the member function of the parent. So if if those three are not um not protected means they are private, then you 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 can only get access to that via this member function. Essentially, you can only get you can only read but you can you cannot modify. So if they were if they were public, would you still need to run the box construction? Oh, if okay, I got it. If if you actually say those are public, right? Those are the public, yes, you can directly access to that, but you still need to worry about construction. Yeah, you still need to worry about that. Well, the thing is that, okay, that's a good question. If you forgot to do this part, then essentially the compiler will see if a box have any default constructor. If they have a default, because if you don't put any parameter, that means it must be, it's not copy constructor, it's not move constructor, it must be default constructor. So it's going to call default constructor. Okay, so so, so that's, that's a good question, that sometimes you don't do it, it's going to be default constructor. Any other questions? Sorry, the lie is so, yes. Can you actually uh, speak a little bit louder? Early, which line? I don't think I have uh, overloading here. Operate. I don't think I have operator overloading. Which 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 line is in box or in uh, carton? 
for what? Here? Oh, this is just uh, initialization. This is this is just a, a way we call curly, uh, sorry, we call bracket initialization. Essentially, you say uh, you can declare this way, uh, saying that whenever you create a box, it automatically set to be 1.0, regardless, especially if you're using default constructor, because default constructor will not do anything. So we make sure that when the default constructor is called, their value is still 1.0, okay? All right, any other question? Okay. <clears throat> so I want to give you some more interesting example. Ah, my GitHub link is not here. So let me actually pull it out here. Okay, so we talk about uh, the concept of uh, person and thing. So now I'm actually going to show you that, well, I can actually extend the thing. So I'm going to use this example called IoT thing. Just another, because this is going to be more and more interesting. Okay, so now you can see that um, this is an example that I have something called an uh, IoT thing. And you can see that what's the, can you look at the code and tell me which class is the parent class of IoT thing? It's a thing, right? So why you look at the public thing over there, right? Okay, so now I want you to take a look at this and control X to <laughs> Okay, so in the IoT thing that uh, in the constructor, I have a default constructor, I have a another constructor which is uh, not a default constructor, it's not a copy constructor as well. So if you take a look at this, um, what is, which, which constructor that of the thing is being called by the, the second constructor IoT thing over there? You actually have already the code over there. Let me actually show you. Okay, this is your code thing. And I also have two constructor. One is the default constructor thing, and the other constructor is just setting up the ownership. And so basically that is actually going to call this one. Okay, so let me just go back to to tell you, compare a little bit about what's the difference between thing and IoT thing. So this is the IO thing dot H, which you already have. Let's actually look at IoT thing. So, uh, you know, I assume you're familiar with that. So IoT thing is really, really short. So can you actually tell me what's the difference between thing and IoT thing? by just looking at this piece of code. Yes, the only difference is that it has IP address. You look at everything else is, is I don't have anything. See, IoT thing, this, this two lines are what? Constructor, and this line is dump to JSON. Remember, I have to have dump to JSON on every single, uh, every single uh, class I have, because then I can actually 
be able to represent my object using the, the JSON paradigms as well. So the only difference is essentially I have IP address. And have you heard about the term IoT? What's IoT? Internet of Things. So what is IoT? It's essentially saying that this particular thing, it could be a device, it could be a book, it could be a box, and it's actually connected to the internet. And it has IP address. That's why I basically have an example where using uh, IoT thing to inherit from that, that particular th stuff. And I want to actually later uh, in the same directory, which I will show you the code, but there's another thing called shadow thing. There's another, you, you look at the shadow thing is also inherited from the thing, okay? And the shadow thing, you can see that I actually have the host URL, class ID, object ID, those kind of variable. This is actually something which we will talk about that in the future, but this is also using uh, um, inheritance relationships. But inheritance is actually quite powerful for us to specialize refining our design to fit what we need to have. Okay, so just show you a few examples uh, about this. I can go back to my slide. Okay, so we already went to this. Um, so I want to say that I asked a question about why do we want to have inheritance? So I want to actually tell you, this is my initial answer. And then maybe you can actually come up with uh, something that's actually better than I, I'm going to say. So inheritance um, really have two important purposes. The first purpose I would say, it, it really just provide a nice capture about what is the abstraction we try to model, the relationship. I mean, relationship is an abstraction about this class and the other class, such a thing, an IoT thing. So if I tell you thing, you would say, okay, thing is just a thing, but I'm not sure it has IP address. And, and so by, Presenting thing and IoT thing, it provides an abstraction to say, okay, we're trying to model things. Some of the stuff actually connected to the internet, and some of the stuff probably doesn't have an internet address. And how do I actually represent that? I'm using thing and IoT thing, and such that we can actually be able to represent that relationship. And the second way of doing inheritance is really try to reusing the code. You can think about that. If I don't have thing, or if I don't have a box, when I directly implement Parton, I actually have to duplicate everything I did in the coding software engineering part that's actually from the parent class. So therefore in object-oriented software development, it's, it's actually good to, to be able to reuse the code. But the other way to say is that Oh, I actually want to create uh, a, a, uh, um, a new program or new class. The first thing you should think about is not try to develop something from the scratch. The first thing you should think about is, well, which class that is closest to the one I try to develop? And then I can just inherit from that class. And then I can actually start working on that. An example you most of you probably didn't realize is actually your homework zero. Homework zero, by the way, already use inheritance. Let's actually take a look at your homework zero code. Uh, let me see. I'm actually going, not going to use homework zero. I'm going to use homework. I'm going to use my um, Wordle program, the homework six. Let me see, where's my homework six? Must be here, okay, great. So this is the homework six. And you're, you have been using this for, for participation, but this essentially is equivalent. 
to uh, homework zero in terms of the way they use uh, the, the programming concept. But let's actually take a look at the homework six client. Now, let me do a homework six server dot H. Take a look at this. I actually define the class. I define the class. This class is called homework six server and is public. I inherit from which class? This is the class I inherited. Sorry, it's over here. I actually inherit from that. It's called JSON RPC column column abstract server. But then you actually see this. I actually have this part. This part is uh, smaller than, greater than with the HRU uh, server. That is called template. Template, we will cover that in chapter 17. It's a very powerful concept. Uh, by the way, I want to ask you a question. Um, who actually wrote this code, this piece of code? You're using this code for both homework zero and homework uh, six, but who actually wrote this code? It's automatically generated. Okay, this code is automatically generated by the, the program I asked you to install for um, homework assignment number zero. Uh, the, the, the program is called JSON RPC stub. It's actually generate this piece of code. So essentially, um, when you specify in the spec file about what kind of program you would like to communicate between the client and server, the code actually automatically figure out the best way to fulfill that requirement is using both inheritance and template. And inheriting from that server, JSON RPC abstract server, and where that was defined, that was actually why you have to install the JSON RPC software for either WSL or using Homebrew on the Mac. Okay, so basically those kind of thing is already installed. So the takeaway message here is that in object-oriented development, a lot of time we're not trying to develop something from scratch. We're trying to find the best match and then we're just inheriting from that. And then um, usually it will give us a very quick way about uh, establish a lot of things. Okay, any question about uh, up so far? Okay, now I'm gonna ask you another question. If you understand the, uh, the concept, the basic concept about um, inheritance, then I want to ask you to think about, do you think there was other reason uh, we should use inheritance? Besides trying to provide abstraction, besides we want to reusing the code, or try to be able to extend. Are there any other reason we should use inheritance? Yeah. I think it goes to chapter 14 more, but let's say you have an array of like cartons and packs that are all kinds of boxes, and you want to like represent those all as boxes fundamentally, and you want to say, I have a list of boxes, but each element in the array can be a specific kind of box. I can still have them all under the base class, and that's polymorphic. Okay, what's your name? Nicholas. Nicholas, okay. Uh, everybody heard what Nicholas was saying? I, I tried to repeat if I didn't uh, say exactly. So essentially what, what Nicholas was talking about is, is a great example about why inheritance will help because we have a different kind of thing, different shape, but sometimes we want to be able to provide the same treatment to those different shape object. And, and yet, because they're different types, sometimes it's actually pretty hard, right? For us to apply because the different type uh, compiler will give us error or at least warning because we're doing that. But using inheritance, we will be able to treat everything as the parent class. For example, we can treat all the thing as a thing. And then over there, we can actually apply. We can put, uh, different thing, different type of thing in the single array, array of thing, that would be fine. Okay. All right, that's good. Any Anything else? Anybody want to think about why inheritance is useful? 
Okay, now I'm going to ask you a question. I don't even know the answer. So, so you will realize that's my style. That I always like to ask questions even I don't have an answer. Uh, I, I, I let that kind of things go into your midterm and final exam as well. Okay? <laughs> So, so let you know. Okay. I mean, if I if I don't do that, then Chat GPT will beat me. Okay. So I have to basically say something. Which okay. So are there any reason or cases scenario that you should not use inheritance? You should not use inheritance. Uh, Nicholas, I know you know the answer, but let's let's pick another student this time. Okay, uh, on the back. Uh, you decide. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, if alternate is not doesn't have anything related to children, then we shouldn't use inheritance because like uh, for some people when they use the inheritance and if they don't really match up, they can have a way of error. Can you give an example? Uh, so for example, uh if, for example, you got two checks, like a triangle and a, a, a circle. Okay, and triangle and circle? Yeah. Uh, if you uh, make it into a, a, a parent class or six, Which one is parent class? Uh, so make a parent class or six. And, uh, for example, in the shape function, you have a parent matter, uh, a function to take the... Uh, Calculate the parent matter of each function uh, of each shape, and the circle and the triangle have different kinds. I see. I see. So you're saying that we have a triangle and we have a uh, we have a circle, but um, their parent might not share too much between the two different shapes, right? That that's a good point. Um, I do think that in the triangle versus circle. I can probably still uh, come up with an uh, answer. For example, I can come up with a uh, two-dimensional object because they are both two-dimensional objects, right? But there are there are cases that I really, I, I can actually, let me actually give you an example that why sometimes um, um, some of the situation you, you, you encounter is that um, when I want to make a inheritance, just because I want to do reducing the code. If I if I want to take this, I can reuse the code to do something. However, that might actually hurt my abstraction perspective about this object. Okay, so that that is one potential reason similar to what you said. Okay, so um, I think by what time is it now? Okay, I have a two more minutes. That's great. That's very encouraging. I want to actually show you this picture before I let you go. So this kind of summarizes what we did today. So we have a, well, I mean, why I keep using a different term? This is my, my inconsistency. I use base class and derived class. I mean, sometimes, Base class is a parent class, derived class is a child class. Okay, I'm going to say uh, base class and derived class over here. So you can see that whenever I have this relationship, I'm mean, really talk about two objects. When you want to create a child object, it's really have this kind of relationship. And then there is something in the middle is called protected, means that protected, you can actually access to that as your private. But there are something which is totally private to the even to the base, then essentially you have to actually using whatever interface they provide. So in the code, you can see that we have a class uh, parent, uh, class child, and then you have a private, protected, and public. I hope you understand what's going on. Okay. And okay, so here is the 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 three words. Remember, I said when you say class, parton, pollen. Public, right? Remember I said public, that is a key word. Over that spot, you can actually say, also say public, protected, and the private. Okay, what does that mean? Means that if is a public, if is protected, the whatever is in the protected area of the base is going to be 
the protected area of the child. Why is that? Because the child might be a uh, base for another derived class. So essentially, when you declare class, pardon, column, public, essentially, protected is still protected. Public, still public. However, if you actually declare it's a protected, then the, uh, then the, uh, the public become protected, the protected become private, okay? And the similar is the private, then basically uh, even the even the um, the public become private as well. Okay, so that is the difference. The keywords that you actually say public, protected, private. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. I will see you on Friday. Friday we'll have uh, uh, another uh, participation credit.